Hello and welcome to another video. So we are going to take another integral, but this time we're going to have a, well, I would call it a quadratic combination of sine and cosine. Okay, so whenever you have a rational expression that has this, the square of sine, the square of cosine in the denominator, um, do not use the t equals 10 half of x substitution because your work is going to get more complicated. Instead, you're going to step up a bit and go to t equals 10x. So when this is squared, you use this substitution. You're going to say let t be equal to the tangent of x. That's what you do. So if the sine or the cosine, if what you have under are just linear, maybe it's 2 sine x plus 4 cosine x, then you use t equals x over 2. That's the difference. Once you do that, life is going to be a lot, lot easier. Now, you might have alternative ways of solving this. Typically, you would say, let me multiply the top and bottom by secant. Okay, secant squared x. Uh, it will solve some problems for you, but again, the number of steps you're going to take will be a lot more. But if you can just take your time, do the substitution, find the value of sine co x, the value of cosine x from the triangle, life is going to be a lot easier. So let's get t into a triangle and see what we get. So we have um, a right triangle here. We're going to say that the tangent of x is equal to t, which is t over 1, which means this is the square root of tangent squared plus 1. And now we can find what sine x is, we can find what cosine x is. So what is sine x? Sine x is opposite over hypotenuse, that's going to be t over the square root of t squared plus 1, okay? And that means that sine squared, let's finish that, so it means that sine squared x will be equal to t squared over just t squared plus 1. Okay, the first one is done. Now we go to cosine. Cosine x will be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over the square root of t squared plus 1, which means that cosine squared x is going to be the square of this, which is 1 over, this square root disappears, you have t squared plus 1. We have the two things that we already have in terms of t. We don't need to deal with trig anymore, and life is going to be a lot easier. The only thing missing is dx. Okay, we got to find dx. We have this, we have this. What would dx be? We go back here. Okay, we have... Um, we should have done that immediately. Okay, so we have t is equal to 10x. What is dt? dt will be equal to secant squared x dx. Okay, um, but we need to know what d secant squared is. Or oh, let's go here and find what secant is. Secant is, oh, secant squared is a reciprocal of cosine squared. You see how life becomes so easy? So we just flip this. So this would be the same thing as t squared, t squared plus 1 dx. That's what secant squared x is. And you can bring that here so that you have dx will be equal to, if you divide this by this, you're going to have dt over t squared plus 1. So now we're just going to copy everything we have here, plug them into the original integral, and we'll be done. So see how beautiful this is going to turn out. So you have um, the integral of 1 over 2 sine squared x plus 4 cosine squared x dx. Now we're going to rewrite this. This is going to be the integral of 1 over what... Um, First is 2 sine squared x, so it's going to be 2 sine squared x, okay? So 2 times this is going to be 2t squared, 2t squared over t squared plus 1. And plus 4 cosine squared x. This is cosine squared x, so 4 times this is going to be 4 
over t squared plus one, okay? Um, dx, where is the dx? dx is dt over t squared plus one. So it's gonna be dt divided by t squared plus one. If you make a very good observation, and this is what always happens when you do this tan substitution, is that whatever you got here is gonna take care of all the denominators, at least the crazy ones. So watch, if I multiply dt by one, I'm gonna end up with, I'm gonna write here, I'm gonna end up with the integral of one over, oh, if dt times one is gonna be dt, sorry. So this is gonna be dt, and then this t squared is gonna multiply this fraction, canceling out the t squared. So you just have two t squared in the bottom. And then if you multiply this by this, you're gonna have just plus four. And that's what we end up with. Now, by the time you get this, you can already see that you're dealing with the antiderivative of arctan because you're having one over something squared plus one. We're gonna rewrite this to make it look like that. But for now, this is what we have. This is equal to, let's rewrite this so that we have one on top, we have one here. That's what's important. For you to use the antiderivative of arctan, you have to have one here, have one here. This, you can make into whatever you want. So this we have to rewrite as this is one over. Now, I'm in order to have one here because this is where the pressure is, there's already one on top, okay? I'm gonna put dt here. In order to um, get, to take care of this, you're gonna divide this by four, you're gonna divide this by four, you're gonna divide this by four, so divide everything by four, which means if I divide this by four, I'm gonna get one. If I divide this by four, I'm gonna have two over four, which gives me one half, so it's gonna be t squared over two. So it's gonna be t squared over two. And if I divide this by four, I'm gonna end up with one over four, okay? Now I can integrate this. I'm gonna pull this one over four to the back. So this is equal to one over four times the integral of one over, instead of me writing this now, I'm gonna write u squared plus one. Now, what is my u? See, u squared is t squared over two. It means u must be t over square root of two. So I'm gonna say, let's put it where, um, let me just put it here, where u equals t over square root of two, okay? because that's my u substitution. I don't wanna keep writing. So what do you think du is gonna be? du is gonna be one over square root of two, dt. You see that? And now I know I can just say dt can, oh, I forgot to put dt here. Okay, <laughs> dt can be square root of two times du, okay? So dt equals square root of two, du. Why am I making the space so small for myself? Okay, but that's enough. And once we have this, we can come back here and say this is equal to 1 over 4, the integral of 1 over u squared plus u. Instead of writing dt, what do we write? Square root of 2 du. So it's going to be square root of 2 du. And that's it. Pull out the square root of two to the back here. This is equal to square root of two over four um, multiplied by the integral of one over u squared plus one du. And we know what this integral is gonna be is the arctan of u. So our answer is, is um, square root of two over four multiplied by arctan of u. So we've reached the end of our calculation of our, compu not computation, of our integration. Okay, and what do we do next? We just need to go back. We don't wanna write u, we wanna write x because that was the problem, it was in terms of x. So we can rewrite this now as the square root of two over four arctan. What did we say u was? We said u was, t over square root of two. That's t 
over square root of 2, OK, plus C. But this is still not where we're going. What did we say T was again? From the beginning, T was 10x. So the final answer you're going to get, this is equal to square root of 2 over 4, arc 10, T. What's T? 10x divided by the square root of 2 plus C. This is the solution to this integration problem. Now you can rewrite square root of 2 over 4. You can divide both top and bottom by square root of 2 or you multiply by square root of 2 top and bottom and you're going to get 1 over 2 rad 2. Yeah, that's fine, but this is okay. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.